good morning, good afternoon, and for some people, perhaps good evening, uh, everybody. Welcome to Marymount Manhattan College. Wherever you may be, whether it's in your living room or at your dining table, right here in New York or across the river in New Jersey, up in Massachusetts or even Rhode Island, down in Florida or in Texas, somewhere in the Midwest or on the West Coast, or even in a sunny beachfront in the Caribbean, I bring you greetings on behalf of our president, Dr. Kerry Walk, and the rest of our administration. In a normal year, we would all be gathered together in our beautiful theater or in our very spacious great hall, but 2020 is anything but normal. Needless to say, this is not the way I would have preferred to meet with you for the very first time. But thanks to this global pandemic, here we are in yet another Zoom event, which often feels to me like the start of an episode of Brady Bunch, or if you're a little younger, a game of Hollywood Squares. But let's look at the bright side. Quite likely, you're in the comfort of your own home. You're with your family and your pets. You have not incurred any plane fares, hotel fees, or highway tolls to be here with us today. And we are grateful for that. Let me begin my brief remarks by saying that for more than 25 years now, I have been here at Marymount College, a place that I call my home. Over these years, I've come to learn a lot about who we are as a college and as a community. Over these years, I've come to know thousands of students and their families, hundreds of faculty and staff. I've served, served three presidents and I've worked closely with many vice presidents and other members of our administration. I've come to know and support our mission, our focus and our values. And in the past eight months, especially, I've come to know how resilient we are as a community as we've worked together to meet the challenges of this great pandemic. So far, knock on wood, we've done well in managing to keep our students, faculty and staff safe and healthy. So today, as I welcome you to the college, I'd like to share a few words about this small, amazing, creative and resilient academic community. Let me begin with our academic orientation. You see, the mission of an institution is like its constitution. It's always a good place to begin as it tells you in a few words what the institution stands for and what it believes in. The very first sentence of our mission describes us as a liberal arts college. This is fundamental to who we are, what we do, and more importantly, how we do it. But when we use the term liberal arts, what exactly do we mean? See, you don't have to be liberal to study the liberal arts. It doesn't matter whether you're from a red state or a blue state. Secondly, the term liberal arts has little to do with art. Yes, we have an amazing art program here, but there's a lot more that we have to offer. When we speak of the liberal arts, we're talking about an array of disciplines, such as mathematics and science, language and literature, philosophy and religious studies, history and economics, just to name a few. To us, the term liberal arts is really about a philosophy of what it means to be truly educated. Frankly, it isn't much about what you study, but more importantly, about how you study what you study. Like other liberal arts institutions, we believe that a truly educated person is someone who thinks critically, reads broadly, writes clearly, speaks articulately, communicates effectively, and problem solves creatively. That's who we are here at Marymount Manhattan College. But in addition, we believe that a truly educated person is someone who understands the interdisciplinarity of knowledge. There is no such thing as a purely economic problem or a purely political problem. As Mark Zuckerberg once said, Facebook is as much psychology and sociology as it is technology. 
Further, we believe that an educated person is someone who understands the relativity of knowledge. They understand that what works in America may not necessarily work in Africa or in Asia. And that's exactly why we ask our students to take courses that involve international, cultural, racial, and ethnic perspectives as part of their liberal arts requirements. We know that the better you understand the world, the better you're prepared to deal with the real world. And finally, when we think of the liberal arts, we know that it has a lot to do with the appreciation of the power of data, of the power of science, and the power of mathematics in solving problems. And we make sure that our students are well prepared for those things. But when all is said and done, you ask yourself, why a liberal arts degree? What does it matter? Well, let me give you two examples. The Bureau of Labor Statistics today argues that an average worker may have as many as 10 different jobs by the age of 40. Having the ability to change from one field to another requires flexibility, adaptability, and that's what you get when you do a liberal arts degree. A recent survey by the American Association of Universities and Colleges said that 74% of employers said that a good liberal arts degree is what is best preparation for a career in this new global economy. Here at Marymount, we pride ourselves in laying that foundation. Every student, regardless of major, will take a minimum of 13 liberal arts courses. That's about a third of everything they study in our general education requirements. For example, during their first year here in the college and in the second year, students will do courses in creative expressions and language and literature, natural science and mathematics, philosophy, psychology, religious studies, social sciences, business and history. And it doesn't matter what that major is, we make sure that everybody has that very solid liberal arts foundation. And this continues during the junior and the senior years in the college. But beyond our liberal arts focus, let me share a few more things about who we are and what exactly we value. You see here at Marymount, we believe that a good academic community, in fact, a good community is one that welcomes and gives equal opportunity to individuals regardless of their nationality, their ethnicity, the color of their skin, what they believe in, the financial status of their family and their sexual orientation. We strongly support diversity, inclusion, social justice and equity. In fact, these values are enshrined in our mission, in our constitution, so to speak, which calls our student to develop an awareness of social, political, cultural, and ethical values for the betterment of society. Secondly, we are amazingly grateful for our strategic location here in one of the greatest cities in the world, New York City. In fact, we think of New York City as our extended campus because we believe that it's just as important of what you study, but where you study. So here at Marymount, New York City is deeply infused in everything we do. In fact, students begin their first year with something called the New York City Seminar, taught by a variety of faculty across a wide range of areas. Some of my favorite examples would be a course called Eat in New York by Professor Peter Nacarado, or Curating the City by one of our art professors, Hallie Cohen. Or how about Socrates in the City by Professor Carrion Beyond? In addition to these wide range of courses focused on NYC education, we offer much more. See, we believe New York is important because New York is a place where you can start any career. I often say that in New York, that's where you find Madison Avenue. That's where you find Broadway. That's where you find Wall Street. 
that's where you find the United Nation. There is no better city to get started on a career than here in New York. In fact, we strongly support internships. We believe that college is merely just a means to an end. It is not an end in itself. So from the very first day, we start our students with understanding the next step in their career. Finally, we think small is beautiful. As you heard, uh, Kristen said, our classrooms are small. You're likely to be in a room of 17 or 15 students, and that's important. So bottom line simply is, there are many advantages of being here at Marymount Manhattan College. You know, in conclusion, I know that picking the right college is something which is a challenge for many. It is a difficult task. There are many pros and many cons that you have to weigh. I know that over the next year or so, you'll be attending many other colleges and institutions. But what I want you to do is I want you to ask yourself about six questions as you do so. One, are you looking for college that values the liberal arts? Do you believe in the liberal arts and what it means to be truly educated? Are you looking for a place that values diversity and inclusion and social justice and equity in the world? Are you looking for a place that has a rounded curriculum and one that takes advantage of a great city such as New York? Are you looking for a college that intentionally focused on career preparation, making sure that college is not an end, but merely a means to that end? Are you looking for a place where class size is small and where you'll be known by your name and not by your number, where you'll be one in 15 and not one in 50 or more? Are you looking for a place where you can maximize your interests and your creativity, where you're valued not by some number that you receive on an SAT score, but where you are valued by who you are as an individual? and somebody who is creative. If your answer is yes, that's what you're looking for. Well, I'd like to invite you to stop again with us, to inquire more. I want you to have a wonderful day and thank you so much. Be safe. And again, welcome to Miramont Manhattan College. Thanks. Thank you so much, Michael. I'm clapping. I'm sure everyone else is clapping from home. Um, thank you for delivering such a powerful message and for sharing with our guests today why Marymount Manhattan is such a special place to so many of us. Thank you again. Um, at this time, I would like to virtually pass the microphone over to Naisha McCormick. She is a current student, current student leader, and current president of student government. And she's here to share with you a little bit of why Marymount is so special to her. Aisha. Hey, y'all. Good day. Thank you for expending your time to all of those in attendance. I'm most grateful for your attention and compassion from this moment forward. My name is Naisha McCormick, and I am here as president of SGA, offering you a stroll through Marymount Manhattan College under the scope of a transfer student from Virginia Beach. It was as if the years between high school graduation and my 22nd birthday, which was my first day of school at Marymount College, was the time I needed to fully immerse myself in my independence so I could flourish as a student of New York City. I must admit, the image of what I thought my Marymount career would be isn't entirely reflective of my current reality, but I choose to believe that I'm better off in this alternate reality. Before I decided to commit to MMC, I gave myself permission to project into the future, a life that would lead me to bliss. And once I was strong enough to believe in my dream, leaping in faith, I landed at 200 East 6th Street at the Cooper Square residence. Attending Marymount Manhattan College meant that my social location increased in value with thanks to the iconic residue that oozes from the pores of the Big Apple. 
Choosing an institution in the city of dreams opened the door to a world of opportunity that I didn't find anywhere else. Even with higher education being remote, I continue to embrace the life gifted to me through my Marymount experience. Within this establishment, I have gained a community of people who have embraced me and continue to help me see deeper within myself as a human being and an artist. I was blessed to have an acting professor who invested in me when I needed it most. And I continue to grow in love with the people who have made my career here a worthy investment. I've had a conversation recently with someone who stated that although we were from completely different parts of the world, they being from South Africa and I from the American South, we were educated similarly. This introspective experience was the impetus for me to embrace the ideal that institutions are ubiquitous. What distinguishes institutions apart from one another is the humanity that lies at the heart of its functions. I can't make a decision for any of you and I won't attempt to sway you with my words because this is a commitment for you and it's about your journey and it is an intimate one. So please be conscious of your instincts and listen to the beat of your own song. But in the spirit of November, I will leave you with thanks. Inside the walls of our 72nd Street home, I have had my fair share of tears in Nugent 459. I have erupted in laughter. I have danced in the halls. I have built precious relationships with mentors. I have found family. And although this is an educational institution, this is what I am most thankful for. So thank you all for being here today.